Okay, so we took a, a pretty long look at Italian uh, work from this time period of the Baroque in chapter 19. We didn't finish chapter 19 because I talked a lot about Caravaggio and Bernini, but frankly, because I love them so much. But understand, I've got to speed this up. You probably don't care about that, but we got a lot of artists to get through, and if I do all that, then we'll never get through them. So continuing along with chapter uh, 19, what I've done is I've chosen to leave out a lot and put in the most essential artists and comments and a term every once in a while. Okay, so here we have uh, Northern European uh, Baroque art. And this artist is Peter Paul Rubens. This painting is in your book, actually only the middle panel of this triptych, remember, three panel altarpiece here. Um, and Peter Paul Rubens, was an artist who was celebrated in his own lifetime. He was quite a celebrity. He, he hung out with all the um, aristocracy, uh, government people, and, and so on. And this is a powerful painting. He was inspired by the musculature of uh, Michelangelo's work from the Sistine Chapel ceiling and other things. And he has a strong diagonal thing going on here, as you can see. Remember, this time period of the Baroque is very active, lots of uh, curves and uh, motion and applied motion, and certainly in this particular painting um, from page 351. You can find this image on page uh, 353 in your textbook. Very famous masterpiece by Rembrandt von Rijn. Rembrandt is sufficient. I don't think most people know the von Rijn part. And it's a, it was a commission um, with a military group. And um, one of the interesting things about it, I believe, is that, well, Rembrandt, first of all, we would be watching a film if we were together in class about this important man's life. He, he rose to great, great fame and fortune and ended up being bankrupt and had a complicated life uh, in so many ways, uh, but was very much in love with his wife, Saskia. That's a little picture of Saskia right there in the middle of this military group. It was painted in such a way at the, where it was originally on display, it's now in the Ricks Museum, at the end of a room where it really looked like it was a part of a room. And that's why if you really take the best of vision of it, you'll come to the far left and take a look at this very complex composition. I could say that there's a little bit of tenebrism in here um, that we mostly know from Caravaggio, but notice the strange uh, contrast of light and dark in this particular painting. Um, the Night Watch actually has a much longer name than the company of Captain Coke and so on. The Night Watch is sufficient. On page 355, you will see a self-portrait by Rembrandt. It is not this particular self-portrait, in fact, Art Store did not have the one that's on page, uh, on page 355 uh, in your book. There are also some other self-portraits of him on page 354, but I think you'll be able to recognize him. He painted over 66 self-portraits. He was a tremendously successful painter for much of his life, as I mentioned uh, before. Unfortunately, um, did not end up in uh, very good shape financially and or even success-wise in his own time. And that's just really uh, too bad. The next Northern European Baroque artist that we're gonna take a look at is Vermeer. There are really only 14, I believe, paintings that we know are by Vermeer. We know that there are many more than that. So each one is a treasure. This is very iconic. Uh, it's a girl with a pearl earring, and I highly recommend uh, going to Netflix and watching this wonderful movie um, about uh, Vermeer's life and his relationship with this model and so on. But one of the things that's really compelling about this painting when, when you see it is this, this highlight on this earring that she happens to have on, not to mention, and her eyes on her lips. It's just a, a beautiful uh, painting portrait and probably his um, best known painting. But I'm going to show you a couple of others. This is not in your textbook. Mm -hmm. This one is, however, and this is the geographer. 
I wasn't even familiar with this until uh, until this version of the textbook came out, this particular Vermeer. As I said, there are not that many of them. But again, it has, uh, well, not again. This one is the uh, has the iconic light coming in from a, an outside source into a room uh, of everyday things, a genre subject, an ordinary person doing something. Well, I don't know about an ordinary geographer, but uh, typically it's, 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 it's not royalty, it's not spectacular, it's not religious, except um, perhaps if we could understand all of it, we might see some some religious symbolism um, from the Protestant direction. For all I know, I'm not sure what he's reading, but um, I suppose because of the globe there, it might have some connection with that. I don't really have much iconology about this particular painting. I want to show um, another one. This is a beautiful, uh, typical painting, certainly a genre subject here. Um, how beautifully painted the, the bread on the table is, and so on. And um, Vermeer, I think, was an extraordinary painter. And I'm just showing a couple of his most famous pieces. Now we're taking the Baroque to Spain. And this is probably the most famous Baroque painting that came out of this time period from uh, that geographic region. And it is by Velazquez. It is called Las Maninas, which is uh, the Maids of Honor. And what we see here is the royal family, and the little princess Margarita here, in this really fancy dress. Um, it's an interesting painting because if you'll notice, there is what, what could be seen as a painting on the back wall, but in fact is a mirror instead. And the mirror is reflecting, perhaps, um, the king and the queen. Um, we have Margarita being attended by, that was not unusual, by um, hand servants. And it was not unusual to have um, little people and so on as a part of the family of entertainment and so on. And they were um, special to the court. And I love this friendly dog here, by the way. We have some, obviously, some Catholic reference here because Spain was still quite Catholic. Um, and uh, late, much later, much later, you notice that here, here is Velazquez painting this picture. So it's a picture of a painting being painted. And so whoever's right here is perhaps right there um, is the subject of this painting. So the subject of the painting is barely in it. And that is a self-portrait um, of Velazquez it was added somewhat later after he became a knight, and you can see the symbol of his knighthood that he painted um, on his uh, sh shirt there. So it's an extraordinary painting, and in fact, it's uh, considered one of the most uh, beloved paintings ever, ever seen. I don't know that I'd go that far with it, but it is a wonderful painting. That's it. We're leaving the Baroque period now. On to chapter 20.